Hi there, this is Delis Kayan and welcome to the Inspired Selling Podcast. And today I have a wonderful guest, Wayne Maloney. Um, so let me just tell you a little bit about Wayne. So in Wayne's words is that he is a career business developer who's not afraid, afraid to stand up and state clearly that he's a salesperson. And I love this about Wayne because there are so many, many people who kind of shy away from the fact that they are a salesperson. And Wayne is right out there and he's saying, hey, that's me, you know, I'm, I'm a salesperson, I'm proud of it. And Wayne started his sales career as a, a road warrior and has led marketing and sales teams across three continents and managed listed MNCs. I need to get my tongue around that, MNCs. <laughs> but regardless of the title, Wayne's focus is always on business development. And that means generating sales, of course. And the other thing I love about Wayne is that he has a reputation for taking no nonsense, a no nonsense practical approach to sales and sales management, and for applying the lean principles to sales. And he's written and co authored a number of books on B2B sales and lean business, and is a member of the Sales Masterminds in Australia, which I have spoken to. A few of your colleagues, in fact, Wayne, which has been absolutely fabulous for me. So I'm thrilled to be speaking to you from here in the UK, right over the water to Australia. Um, so today, Wayne, I, I, I know we're going to have a discussion about sales management and the importance of good sales management. So this interview, I guess, really is for those who are in management or considering taking a management position or maybe an entrepreneur who's looking to build a sales team um, and also of course for sales people so that they can um, really understand what they should be expecting from a good sales manager so welcome Wayne thanks Dillis that's a lot to cover and thanks uh, thanks so much for that introduction I'll have to uh, look at the recording on that and uh, and make note of it for myself for, uh, for <laughs> reference <laughs> um, you're, you're, <laughs> you're highly respected in your field, Wayne. So Thank you. pleasure to have you have you on today. So let's talk first of all then about the importance of sales management. And and we both know um, from experience that if you've got a say, a good sales team, and this is something that I always used to do when I was sales director for Barclays, if there was a good sales team, I would say, who's the manager? Yep. And if there was not such a good sales team, I would say, who's the manager? Because it really does. The, the team is as good as the manager in most cases. So what's your take on this in terms of the importance of managers really upskilling themselves to be able to effectively lead teams? And what are the ramifications of not having those skills? Well, I, I guess the, there was an interesting quote by Henry Ford and uh, as, as you get to know me Dillis as you have over the years you'll know that I draw on quotes of, uh, of people quite a bit but Henry Ford said coming together is the beginning keeping together is progress and working together is success and it yep. really yeah and to me it's really the role of the sales manager in the organization to short to ensure that people are working together uh, to ensure success within the organization sale in generating revenue. And it, it's one of the things that sales managers must do is they must look at letting their team do that work and developing their team to achieve that. And in particular, not going out there and trying to do that work themselves. And that's, that's one of the, I guess that's one of the failings I see in, in many sales managers, especially those that have come up through the ranks of being salespeople mm. uh, is that, Selling is what they know. Uh, management is not what they know. And leadership, they know even less. So they do tend to want to take on that sales role and, uh, and they struggle to relinquish that uh, and move into that sales management position. So for the success of a sales team, for the success of the individuals within the sales team, the sales manager needs to step back from selling he needs to continually develop himself and understand the methodologies that are out there and uh, the changes that are happening in selling. 
and he needs to be able to instill those changes within his sales team and help them develop so that he gets success. And to me, it's, it's not just about management. Management to me is about administration. To me, it's much more about, it's about leadership. And leadership to me is about encouraging people to strive to go beyond what their normal expectations would be. And, uh, you know, that's a good leader. And yeah. that's what I think a sales manager should be. They should be a good leader, not just an administrator. Uh, c completely. Um, and I, I remember years ago, a, a colleague of mine, um, he was a sales director as well, but we used to call him Mr. Email Manager. Yeah, because and he was, he was always cutting and dicing figures and sending emails out, and and actually he's, the team didn't respect him at all. He wasn't a leader in in that sense, and 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 I think the sad thing is, I'm sure you'll have seen these statistics too. That there was some statistics I wrote uh, read, and I think it was from Miller Hyman, and they said that 18.6 percent of salespeople will leave their employer every year. Yeah. Now, that kind of, of, of movement of people is, is a huge cost in, in both time and money to organisations. And, you know, the, the sales leader can make a huge impact on that when they're really leading properly. And look, it's interesting you, you use those statistics. There's some statistics done um, within the HR organisations that I've worked with, and they're saying that... You know, it may be 18.6% leave each year, but 70% of them leave, of those people that are leaving, are not leaving a company, they're leaving a manager. Mm -hmm. And a lot of it comes down to, you just use the term respect, um, and that the people didn't respect the manager you were talking about. One of the problems with a lot of people that move into management in the first instance is they believe that they can command respect. Mm -hmm. You cannot command respect. You can only earn respect. Mm -hmm. And you can only earn respect by helping people achieve what they need to achieve and by respecting those individuals themselves. I, I, I moved into... One of the reasons I wrote my book, um, The Roadmap to Sales Management Success, was at the ripe old age of about 23, I was moved into a sales management position because I was a gun salesman. And I went from being a gun salesman to wondering what the hell I was doing because I had absolutely no idea from a sales management perspective. I'd had no, no training, no experience. And I couldn't understand why the guys weren't following me and doing what I, what I expected. And it was because I moved into it, I think, really so naive that I just expected that they would respect me. Uh, and they, you know, and they, they didn't. Because you had the label. Yeah, exactly. And, and, and the label doesn't work. Mm -hmm. The label doesn't work. You have to earn that respect and you can only earn that respect by being respectful of other people as well and helping them achieve something. They need to see value in exactly the way, same way a client needs to see value in their salespeople. The salespeople need to see value in their sales manager. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, that respect won't be there. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, looking back... I've had good and bad managers. I've been self-employed now for yep. 18 years. Uh, but pre prior to that, I had a really excellent manager who I respected. He was motivational. He, you know, he shared goals with us. He, he, he made you feel like you could walk on water. And in fact, a lot of us did walk on water with the results that we achieved. Um, but on the other side of the coin, I've had the exact opposite of that, where you've had managers who didn't really pay attention. They, they, they cut the numbers. They, they didn't develop you as a person. And the difference is like chalk and cheese. Yeah. Well, a, a good sales manager knows their place in a team. Mm. Um, there was a, I'm just trying to recall, I think it was um, Paul Bryant, a US football coach, and he said that no coach has ever won a game by what he does on the field. It's all what his players do that counts. And that's yeah. exactly the same in a sales role and a sales manager. He mm. needs to understand that it's only his team that can get the results that he's judged by. Mm. And, uh, you know, he can only do that by empowering his team training and developing his team 
And, and again, we come back to that word respect. Yeah, yeah. And I know one of your principles is, is about communication. So just talk yeah. to us about that for a moment, because that is so, so key and key critical, isn't it? it? Look, it is. And good sales managers need to be excellent communicators. And I don't just mean they need to know how to talk. Uh, as you would know, Dillis, from you know your experience in sales and in sales management yourself, um, communication is about listening and it's about understanding. It's not just about talking. You know, that's just a small part of it. Mm. A good sales manager needs to be able to translate strategy. So coming from above to the sales team, they need to be able to translate a company's strategy into action so that they are building their sales plan and helping their sales sales team develop their own individual sales plans around the company's strategy. Mm. They also need to act as a conduit from the market back into the organisation. And that, to me, is critical. The, the, the sales manager and his team are at the coalface. So there's no one better to feed information back into marketing, to R&D, to finance, as to what's happening and what the company needs to do to meet the needs of the marketplace than the salesperson. Yeah. You can do all the market research, you know, the formal market research you want, but nothing beats the feet on the street. And that's, you know, that sort of communication is, is absolutely necessary. So it's up, down and sideways. They need to be able to communicate on all levels. Mm. And you know what's interesting? I was talking to a friend of mine, in fact, this week, and she was talking about her colleague who's having difficulty in the, in the business motivating the staff and getting the staff to, to do what they need to do effectively and efficiently. And they've got all of these... Um, motivators as she saw it in place you know they, they give them prizes and um they've, they've got incentives and so on but it's not it, it's not cutting the mustard it's just not working and these people are that it sounds like a really demotivated team and when my friend asked her about the you know do they understand the strategy have you shared the vision with them of of what the, the plan for the business I and mean, oh no none of that do, do you yeah. do you have appraisals and and allow them to to talk and talk about what they want in the business and you know what they're looking to achieve in the business no no none of that and yeah. so it, it was just like you know they're spending all of this money on incentives and so on but there's no good communication going on yeah. And, and if they can get that in place, I believe that they will make strides forward. The best sales managers I've ever worked for actually empowered me. <clears throat> and, you know, the motivation, the incentives were all great. But I found that if I was empowered to go out and, and achieve what, what we agree, we had a, a, a mutual agreement on what needed to be done and a mutual understanding on how I would go about it and specific milestones along the way. And I found that when I was empowered to then go out and do my job, I achieved everything that I needed to do to make the most of the incentives that were in place. Mm. So it was never the incentives that were the motivator. Yeah. The motivator was always being empowered and being trusted to go out and actually do my job and being taught how mm. to do it. That is what a good sales manager does. A good sales manager, they will, I've already talked about leading in the to that, but a good sales manager will understand the strengths and weaknesses of each individual within his team yeah. and he will work with them to leverage the strengths to help achieve their goals but then work with them to address those weaknesses so that they can go out and become better salespeople than what they are now and, and better business people in yeah. general. Yeah. And, and also understanding that there's different things motivate different people. So, yeah. for example, not everybody wants promotion but then there are some that do. So it's getting to know your people really, isn't it? It is. And it's interesting you talk about promotion because it's only been recently that sales management hasn't been seen as just the natural progression in sales. All too often, salespeople saw the only way that they had of progressing within an organisation was to go from sales to sales management. Mm. And there was only 
of the salespeople that I've worked with that have actually stood back and gone, no, I don't want to go in that path. I'm quite happy to be a salesperson. Yeah. And these days I think it's respected much more by people to be able to say, no, I am just a salesperson. I'm a damn good salesperson and I'll be respected for what I can do in that space as distinct from have to prove myself as a sales manager or, or something else within the organisation. Mm. Yeah, quite. Um, and and th this is all goes back to the communication, doesn't it? At knowing your people and listening and, and, and having that, those conversations between between themselves. Yeah, absolutely. And, and it comes down to knowing the role of the sales manager. You know, we've spoken about respect. We've spoken about the fact that a sales manager needs to know their place in their team. But a sales manager also thinks we and not me. Mm. Um, you know, as a salesman, let's face it, salespeople tend to be fairly insular. It's only of recent times that we've really started to see salespeople become much more team players. You know, the lone wolf of days gone by were always the highly respected salesperson because they could go out there and actually achieve great results. That's not happening these days. So the sales manager needs to think, we are not me. He needs to understand that a champion team is always going to beat a team of champions, that old cliche. Mm. And they've got a strong interest in coaching and developing their team so that mm. they can so that they can achieve those those greater results. It's a synergistic effect from the sales uh, sales manager's perspective. Mm. And and you know, I really want to kind of dig into this coaching and development because that is just again so critical to the success of the team of, uh, to the we. Um, so let, let, just expand on that a bit, Wayne. Yeah. Look, coaching and development. Um, all too often I've seen organisations, they'll say, oh, you know, sales are dropping, what do we need to do? We need to generate more revenue. Uh, I know what we'll do. We'll send our salespeople out on a three-day three sales training course and uh, everything will be fixed. And mm. look, as we know, um, you know, sales training doesn't work unless it's reinforced. So one of the things that with the clients that I work with now, one of the things that I ask them is uh, that the will work with me and say, hey, I want you to train our salespeople. One of the first things I ask them is, what training have you done with your sales manager? Mm. And all too often I get, you know, like a glazed look back at me and why would we train our sales manager? Yeah. And one of the things that I, I, I try and reinforce with them is if you train your sales manager, he can then train his salespeople and he can reinforce whatever the training is that's done there. Um, and you get much more bang for your buck uh, or your pound you know, in, yeah. in the UK. Uh, but you need to be, uh, the sales manager needs to be right across what all the latest um, trends are. And I use that term guardedly, but, you know, we've got inside selling, we've got challenger selling, we've got all of these people out there that are considered thought leaders that are, that are always coming up with something new and different about the way we should sell. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, um, selling hasn't changed a lot. You know, selling, you know, artificial intelligence is having an impact, but people still buy from people. And sales managers need to be able to instill that confidence within their sales team and they need to be able to continue to reinforce with them not just what all the latest trends are in selling and challenger selling. Yeah, it's got some great concepts in it, but it doesn't replace relationship or solution selling. It fits in with that. So they need to understand how do these things migrate? How do you migrate along the path of, of sales development? And how do you then bring that back to your sales team? So the sales manager needs to be on top of what's happening and continually bringing this back to the salesperson and as I said earlier, Dillis, he needs to understand the strengths and weaknesses of his sales team so that he can identify what the salesperson needs developed and work with each individual to do that. Yeah. You know, it, in sales training, there's no one size fits all. Um, you, know, you, you know, you may do Miller Hyman, you may do uh, Taz, you, you, know, you may do challenger selling, but at the end of the day, that's just a, a template. Mm -hmm. The sales manager's job is to identify what size has to fit that template for each individual and then work with them to get the most out of that. 
Yeah. Uh, and it's about the sales manager being responsible for his people, for each of the individuals. And a, so responsible down and accountable up to yeah, higher absolutely. levels of the business, you know. Um, and, and, and I'd just like to share a story with you actually on this in terms of development. Um, I remember working with a team of, of sales managers and I was asking them about how they felt about what their teams were doing. Yeah. And they said, and this were, these were the exact words from one particular person, but it was the feeling across the room. And they said, you know, we tell, I've told them what to do and then they don't do it. And then I tell them again and they still don't do it. And yeah. then I get really cross. And yeah. honestly, it was so funny because what I did, I, I put some instructions up on, on the uh, screen from a PowerPoint and I read it to them so th they could read it. Then I read it to them. Then I turned it off and I said, right, I'd just like you to write those steps down for me, please. Yeah. And, and they hung their heads in shame. Honestly, it was the most, it, it, it's such a memorable occasion you know i'm recalling it to you now and this was a number of years ago and they went oh god i feel ashamed and it was from that moment that they realized the impact that they could have if they would you know um explain something then demonstrate it and then let them try it and do it until they were proficient at doing it. I call it the thermometer test. You know, get that thermometer out and check that they're still at the standard that you want them to be. Yeah, absolutely, Dillis. And I, and I work on very similar principle. You know, tell them what to do, show them what to do, and that's the demonstrate, mm -hmm. and then praise or redirect. Yeah. Um, you know, you, you work through that cycle continually. And if you're developing someone, you need to understand that they're small steps. You know, you tell them what to do and show them what to do on the simpler things and then praise them or redirect them. If you've got someone that, that's at the simple task that needs to be continually redirected, well, maybe you need to sit down and have a, you know, a fairly serious talk to them about whether they've made the right career choice. Ooh. But the objective there, of course, is to continue, continually challenge that person. And yes, you may have to redirect them a couple of times, but get them to a point where you're praising and then moving them up to the next step. And that it's only by the sales manager understanding the, the quirks of the individual and the, the weaknesses of the individual mm. uh, as well as their strengths so that they can move them through that path. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, like a, it's like a great coach. I, I bring a lot of sporting analogies back. I've, I've had a, a lot of experience coaching. I've, I've coached, I've been a trainer of rugby league teams, first grade rugby league teams. Um, and I I've didn't been, know that, Wayne. Yeah. That's something I, I didn't I, know about you. <laughs> I've also been a, uh, an international coach of uh, martial arts teams of, uh, you know, my background. So, yeah, I've got, a, I've got a big sporting background. And the thing that I find is there's really nothing that I, I've learnt in business that isn't applicable to sport. And there's nothing I've learned in sport that isn't applicable to business. And one of the greatest, you know, as, I, I, you know, I was quite a good martial artist. I enjoyed it, but I never got more satisfaction than when I had guys that, you know, that went beyond what my capabilities were, that I was able to teach them to be better than me. Mm. Um, and, you know, that was, that was great. That was just such a fulfilling experience. And to have them come back and recognise that I'd done that, uh, that was even better, you know, to have them come back and, and acknowledge that you had made those sacrifices for them, but it, it, it helped them achieve that. And when you've got a team in sport, you need each individual performing to their best so that the team has got the end results. Yeah. Yeah. Michael Joy, I've actually got a quote here that I, I, I was actually... I, I looked at today when I was putting together a, a document for something else, and Michael Jordan once said, talent wins games, but teamwork and intelligence wins championships. And, you know, I mean, it's timely that I, I had it out today, but that's so true. Yeah. You know, you, and the sales manager needs to look for talent because he only wants the most talented people he's got there, but he wants people that he can develop so yeah. they become more talented. But what he's really looking for is that teamwork so that they can win the championship, so that they can actually 
you know, achieve the team goals and that's the way the business will improve. Mm. And, and of course, one of the other things with working together as a team is, is to break down these silos of information because everybody's got different uh, knowledge and expertise and so on. And it's, it's breaking that down and really sharing that together as a team, isn't it? Bonding that together. It's like putting it all into the melting pot as yeah. opposed to each individual holding that intelligence. Yeah, and look, there was, um, I'm just trying to think who it was. Um, it's a quote that I actually have in one of my books, and it was, knowledge is power. And uh, I just can't think who said that now, but it goes back to, to, the, uh, to the 60s, you know, and they were saying knowledge is power, and it's exactly the opposite now. Mm. Knowledge is not power. Distribution of knowledge is power. So, you know, being able to share that knowledge and, and create value in the information and the content that you share that's where the power is these days. It's not in that silo of keeping it all to yourself. Yeah. It's being able to distribute that. Because if yeah. you don't, someone's going to find it anyhow these days. Yeah. You know, you, and you the sales manager is the catalyst for that, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It has to be. Yeah. Uh, and, and all too often I've seen throughout, you know, I've got four decades of experience in, in selling and managing. And I've all too often I've seen sales managers that, have not wanted to share information because they're, I don't know, they're, they're somehow afraid mm. that someone's going to take their job. Mm. But you know, their job is to help their people become better. Yeah. And you know, through that, they will become better sales managers and you know, have greater respect and, uh, and get the rewards that go with that themselves. Mm. So, so far we've talked about then um, sharing, sharing the strategy, sharing yeah. the, the business strategy, and then yep. breaking that down to the individuals and so on, um, mm -hmm. to for the, the manager to think we, not me, yep. to think about the team, break down that, the, the silos of information and put that all into the melting pot to really develop and grow the team. Um, we've talked about good communication and making sure that, that, that there's a two-way communication as well. And that there is transparency in communication. I, I, we didn't touch on that, but I think that's important too. Look, it, it, it is. Um, transparency is, is absolutely critical because, again, you, you talked about strategy and not sharing strategy. Um, one of the things I, I work with with a number of my clients, not just in sales, but in business strategy. And one of the things that I say to them is you need to be able to put your business plan onto one page. Mm -hmm. And they turn around and they say, well, what do you mean? How do I put my business plan onto one page? And it's really quite simple. What's your vision? You know, what, what is your vision? Where do you want to be and when do you want to be there? Mm -hmm. What are the key strategic initiatives that you have for the business? And then in each of the key areas of the business, what are the three key objectives that you've got? What are your three key sales, marketing, systems, finance objectives, yeah. all of that can go on one page. And what I say to them is there's nothing on there that you shouldn't be able to pin up on the wall of any part of your office or your workshop yeah. and share it with your, with your people because they need to know what they're working towards. Yes. Exactly. And then they need to know what they, their KPIs are. What are my specific KPIs to meet that overall or vision? And they need to have the, that communicated, a two-way communication that they yeah. agree with and, and, and the steps that, go, that sit behind that. Absolutely. And it's not just KPIs. KPIs, when, when we talk about KPIs, people tend to think, that we're, we're measuring the past, you know, we're measuring performance, the lagging mm. indicators. It's also the leading indicators with yeah. people, in particular salespeople. The sales manager needs to be able to help the salesman understand, or the sales girl, I'm sorry, saleswoman. Yeah. Uh, I need to pick <laughs> myself up. And, I, and I, I have three daughters and yeah. uh, a granddaughter, and they're all guys to me, so I, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm guarded when, in my... When you say he, I know you mean we. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, and, and the sales the sales manager's job is, and I've lost my train of thought now. Right, um, we were talking about key, key performance indicators. Oh, that's right. Yeah, um, the sales manager's role is not just to say, you know, 
what the lagging indicator was, you know, have you made these numbers, have you not made these numbers, but their sales manager's job is to help the person understand what they need to do to be successful. You know, not just the number of calls they need to make, but how do they go about building their own profile? How do they go about understanding what the value proposition is that they're taking to the market? How do they understand what the value proposition is for each individual opportunity they're working on? Sales manager needs to sit down and understand that with their with their staff, so that they're uh, they're able to develop each opportunity, but develop each salesperson again. Mm, yeah, and, and you know, so that goes back to one of the other points that we mentioned in terms of this development of your people, and it really is critical, isn't it, that you that you develop each individual who is exactly that. They are all different, all individual, all with different needs. Yeah, you know, some people will need close hold hand holding, yeah. maybe for a while. You'll have others who who want the autonomy. They want to be able to go out and and work their own business and and just have a touch with the the sales manager, metaphorically speaking, of course. And yeah. um, you know, so it really is about understanding your people, the the personalities what they want from from the role and what their development needs are and also what their strengths are because you can use those strengths to help build others in the team you know yeah. that it doesn't all ha- always have to land on on the shoulders of the sales manager yeah. a, a good a good strength in one of your team they could become the mentor in that particular area for other members of the team Absolutely, yeah. It's a, it's about sharing that load if you can uh, yeah. across and uh, and and leveraging the strengths of the team and and a good team will understand that um, teamwork is essential. You know, it really comes back to that quote I put forward earlier from Ford about uh, you know teamwork is success. Yeah. And if you've got someone in your team that is so uh, isolated that they're not prepared to work as part of that team and share and help. You really need to question just how long that person is likely to be able to stay part of that team because what would happen what what will happen is they will impact morale mm. and when morale is impacted it's then going to have a very significant impact overall on the revenue generation for the organization and that's something that I know a lot of your uh, your audience are, are entrepreneurs they're people that would be uh, looking at you know they've probably been doing the selling in their organization and they they're now got to look at my God, I've got to trust this to someone else. I've got to bring someone on. And that is really, really difficult. And, you know, I encourage anyone that's that's making that step, look at the sorts of things that you're putting up on your website. Uh, look at the sort of things that you're, you know, that you're talking about on your Facebook page because all of those are helping people become inspired, not just in selling, but inspired in the way that they're able to manage those people and make that transition from doing it to helping others do it. Mm. And I can see another couple of interviews in the future, Wayne, because I think recruitment is a is a big topic also yeah. that we can cover. And and as you've just mentioned, how to transition from maybe yeah. doing the selling yourself to bringing on a team, um, and and not just the recruitment of the team, but also that transition from being the salesperson into the the sales manager. Yeah, well, there's there's a couple of things. There's, in fact, you've hit on two chapters in in my sales management book. One is that the the sales manager is a team selector, and uh, the other is the sales manager is a change agent. Mm. And you know, the, the the anyone in a sales management role needs to understand that you know it's not you can't just define it uh, in a paragraph. Mm. There are a number of different facets to sales management and to be good as a sales manager, you need to understand not necessarily how to master each one of them, but you need to understand how to be good at each one of them. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, Wayne, I could talk to you all day because I absolutely love with a passion, both sales and sales management, as you know, and and I know you do too. Um, So, Let's just share with us again the name of your book. Uh, Your Roadmap to Sales Management Success. Your Roadmap to Sales Management Success. Excellent. Is it on Amazon? It is. And it's written, It's uh, look, I'm not looking to go out there with groundbreaking new ideas. It's a 
it's a handbook uh, for anyone that's new to sales management, any business owners that now have to manage people that are doing selling or sales managers that just want to go back and refresh what actually works. So it's a practical handbook of 40 years experience. And actually, you know, Wayne, I don't think it has to be groundbreaking because if you can do this, the, the basic things well, you will actually get great results. Absolutely. I so I, I'm a great advocate of, of that, you know. So if anyone would like to get in touch with you, Wayne, how can they do that? Uh, well, Wayne Maloney, and that's Maloney with an O, M-O-L-O-N-E-Y. So it's Wayne at WayneMaloney.com. Yeah. And uh, they will find me on there. They'll get my uh, my blog. Uh, or they can find me on LinkedIn. And I'm happy to uh, connect with anyone that wants to send through and, and share thoughts and ideas on sales and business development. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Wayne. It's been an absolute pleasure talking to you and getting your insights on on this. Just it, It's such an important role. It, you know, the sales leader, sales manager is so impactful in an organisation. So thanks again. And hopefully we'll speak again soon. I look forward to it. Thanks, Dillis. Thanks. Bye. Bye-bye.